Hello? Hi! How you folks doing? Are you starting this road off? I have Terror Dots. Hi, Lakota. How you do? Why did that show up over here and not on the main one? Well, that's a little weird. Whatever. Really? What the? Is that water? Can I not enjoy my tater tots? Not tater tots, my fucking corn dogs, mini corn dogs. Without you trying to redeem hydrate? Fine. I'm gonna pause my music now. I'm gonna undeafen for junkie. Lakota has already, within the first five minutes of my stream, redeemed hydrate. Not even five minutes. He's already redeemed hydrate. Damn you, Lakota. Ah. Uh. And I need to pull up your live stream on my other monitor. <clears throat> yeah, because I uh, just started streaming. Yes. Which is why Junkie's with me, because Junkie is going to be live streaming right beside me. Yeah, as I play uh, and fuck around with Blender. Yes. So, they're doing also, a Blender. Also, George, if you could actually do me a favor. Hmm. Pull up my stream audio and tell me how the music sounds. If it's too quiet, too loud. Uh, yeah, give me a second. Actually, hold on. Do I even... Why did that open up over there? Why is this its own separate window? What the fuck? Hold on. So my volume's at 50% for your stream? Yeah. Hold on. Let me mute that. So my volume's at 50% for your stream? At 50% for the stream and what? The audio is pretty good, so you're fine. So it's at a good volume to where I can still be heard, you can still be heard, but so can it. How fat are Body you that you eaten so four fine. sandwiches? Look, man, I eat, and you already know. By the way, Junkie. Yeah? How fat are you that you eat four sandwiches? Why is... I eat, and you already know. By the way, Junkie. Yeah. Why is what? I gotta uh, do this, because I don't know why it threw you over into a different... Who did it? Who did it? Who, do, who done it thing? Well, Lakota did a thing. You gifted a sub to uh, Low Poly. Interesting. Ah. What happened? I thought my body broke on me. Paste and go. There we go. Also, Junkie. Yeah? There you go. Yeah, your, your audio on your stream is good. Okay. Also, do me another quick favor. Just say something in my chat, just so that I can make sure my chat's working. I'm gonna move this up, so I can do that. <laughs> chat rules, don't be a dick. I love your chat rules. <laughs> so just let me know when you've written something. I just did. Okay, yeah, uh, because I accidentally somehow uh, removed the actual window for... Um, uh, chat in my streamlabs a while ago, and I couldn't figure out how to get it back. Oh, are you talking like on the side or like yeah, actually on the in side. like the visually on stream? No, 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 no. In my streamlabs, um, like setting setup thing, like the one you were looking at before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I I found out how to do that too, but and how... I, I figured out how to reopen it. So on the left side, or depending yeah. on how your streamlabs is set up. Yeah. There's a little tiny arrow on the side oh. that will yeah, I see open it. it up. Okay. Uh, widgets? No, it, it's where, uh, where your chat would be. Oh. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah so where I you pulled saw that it, up and pulled it back. Yeah, so where you saw it originally, it's a small arrow 
that will open it up. It okay. will push everything over. All so. right. Yeah. Th thanks. And yes, I see that you said you're an ass. <laughs> Let me yeah. All right. Change the input. Okay. So at least to get shit going, uh, George, would you like to give uh, the first suggestion as to something I can make? Don't, don't, don't you ask me. Cause you know why? Why? It would be one of the props for my model. Uh huh. So like I said, don't ask me. Okay, then how about this? Give me a generalized um, idea for something. A theme, a concept, something to go off of. Uh... It can be a theme of a holiday. It could be themed after something like sci-fi, fantasy, shit like that. Give me something to work off of. Fuck it. Something from uh, either Baldur's Gate or D&D &D based. Okay. Because you and me have been on a D&D &D kick basically lately. Yeah. He may have been talking about Hey, what, what if I uh, did like my own iteration of like your um, basically your your plasmoid's mech suit? Okay, that'd be cool. Do you need the reference image of what I originally chose? Um, or are you just gonna completely go from scratch and just only wording of what it is? Actually, just just because of a few things and for how you described it before, I'm actually not gonna go with that. I actually want to see. Um, because hmm. I definitely want to go with what you said about D and D related. Yeah, nice work. Uh, okay. Ha let Let's build off of that. Um, because I'll tell you this much right now, that yeah. mecca. It's the original concept image. That's what the stone mixed with metal is. Now the way it is built is made out of scrap space metal. So like the kind of uh, spaceship metal. Yeah. Like the kind of metal that be that the hull of a ship would be made of. Mm-hmm. Because the way I originally thought it is that you and you and me spent that whole year yeah, in like the scrap the yard. Up. Uh, grabbing whatever spaceship metal that was lying around from the destroyed ships or whatever. Okay, kind of melded our, our... It and fixed it together to make the mecha. Okay, I also want to imagine there's other like electronic parts integrated to it as well. Yes. All right. Uh, remind me, does it have any onboard weapon systems? Uh, the only thing that is weapon related on it at all. Yeah. Uh, is the empty shoulder mount that's supposed to have a 40 millimeter cannon that we were supposed to build on it, but we never got to it. All right. Because I was hoping to go over it with ring and put something like that together. But if you create a concept of it, we can also swing it by ring and be like, hey. So. Okay. This was um, the thing. Yeah, so if you could actually, if you could send me that reference image again, just so I have an idea about how I'm going to build this thing off of, because it's going to have a scrap look to it, I'll tell you that right now. Alright. Like, essentially, as if we took the metal and did our best to, like, form and shape it into the shell that we wanted. Let me see if I still have the images. I, as I'm scrolling, I just see the um, the breakfast um, of Angry Sky. Because while I was down there visiting her, she woke up very grumpy. And so while she was angrily eating her cereal, I took a photo of her. Just casually. Uh, that's too far. This is one image of it. I might have it on my desktop. Okay. So there, there's one reference image. The other one actually has like a full like front and side view. Ah, my neck. Oh yeah, like a T-pose view? Kinda yeah. 
God damn you okay. and Sky are too adorable together. Look, man. She was actually not too happy that I, I took a photo of her while angrily eating breakfast. Alright, well... Off of that, I definitely have something I can work with, so... View medium icons. I can see whether or not I threw it in here. Uh, nope, in here. I hope I didn't delete that because that would be asinine. Yeah, so like the 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 um core design is based off of that thing, right? Or really like the core structure. Ki yeah, kind of, yeah. Um All right. Why does that image no longer exist on my PC? That annoys me more than anything. Here it is. Uh, okay, yeah, that that's definitely more helpful. That's a front and back view of it. Yeah. By the way, the arms aren't going to be as flexible in that one in my design. Okay. Also, Blood is in your chat. Hello, Blood. Oh, are they now? Yep, Blood Angel. Hello, Junkie. How are you, buddy? Hey. Yeah, what's funny is that a lot of the time whenever I have streamed, they're always one of the first people to ever pop in my chat. They say hi, and I've tried to respond with them afterwards, and they just say nothing. Yeah, Blood does that to me too. I've just gotten used to it. Oh, this is funny. All right. So I can have your chat and my chat open at the same time. <laughs> I, I, I have... Oh, now Blood responds! Because I see them saying it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah, so it's just you interacting more than just a uh, high and bye. <laughs> No junkie is busy, plunder is uh, not sure what the fuck they mean by that. That was unpleasant. Okay, that was very unpleasant. <laughs> this one's mine. Please. Ah. They're down. Everyone okay? I have your back, Ratchet. Hold up. I also demand this evidence. Doing good, pal. Hey, look, man. Uh, you'd have to ask Skype for permission for it. It's one of those old Sonic pylons. Oh, yeah. We used to go fishing with those darn things. Try giving it a whack. The sound should attract a Tortamoth.
Sure. Junkie. Yeah? Explain your process. What What? What is your thoughts? Regarding... What you're doing. Like... Oh. Uh... Well... Currently, I'm just trying to get a rough idea of the general shape of it. Once I have a good idea of the general shape of it, that's when I was um, going to start incorporating some of the more uh, core design elements. Okay. So, like, um, so for example, I'm currently trying to block out the main torso and the shoulders. And since on the design itself, it has like these little um, uh, like little cylinder-like things on t on the shoulders. I'm trying to figure out both a how I can uh, like actually build those on this, as well as how they can incorporate with the it's made of space junk design. We gotta go fishing more often. So like for example, like what would these pieces actually be functionally, as well as what would they be from? Yeah. And no. sort of. No, go on. I was just gonna say, and that's sort of just what I'm trying to iron out right now is basically what is gonna be what and what is gonna be made of what. Well, I know for the back image that I yes. sent you, yeah, those little uh, hole ports. Um, yeah. they're actually meant to be like mortars or missiles. So essentially um, mortar barrels. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay, since our design doesn't really have, like, like you said, that's why I asked about the onboard weapon one. systems. Yeah. This doesn't have it. I was thinking this. Given the fact that the suit is probably mechanized in some way, it's not purely just being puppeteered by you, right? Yeah, it's mainly puppeteered by me, yes. But by itself, will just kind of stand. Or uh, okay, so it's so it's less like a mech and more like a doll, because it won't move on its own unless if you give it input. For the most part, or I yeah. can't move on. Okay, all right, because I was sort of thinking of having it where it's sort of like. Like, if you think of the Titans from Titanfall, but a bit more, like... Okay, have you seen Pacific Rim? Oh, yeah. Pacific Rim have you seen the? Have movies. you seen the, um... <clears throat> sequel? Yeah, sadly. Y you know, like, the one scrap one that the girl makes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to go for something like that in, a de in terms Looks of like overall design. Of okay. But instead of being made of just random junk, it's made of space junk. Yeah. Think of more so like right. space junk with um, a little bit of refined to it. In it a is sense. time yeah. for the critter strike. Yeah, so like, for example, what I was thinking is that maybe what it could be is the little bits on the back of it in what you showed me, where you said they're mortar shells? Yeah. Or mortal, mortar barrels? I'm over here! Is I was thinking I could have it where they're like nose pieces of rockets, or they're like exhaust pipes or something. Yeah. That's why I said. That's why I asked if it was actually truly mechanical to some degree, because if it was, then I could figure out, okay, how is it powered, and if so, how could ship get routed? Yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, so this goes into all of the design anyone? process of how I think of shit. I mean, I'll say this right now. Currently, the version that we have in our campaign yeah. is not fully teched. Like, it's still, like... It, it's more mechanical than electrical. Yeah. I think version 3 Hop might in. be mechanical. Go ahead, Ratchet. I think I enjoy All right. fishing. <laughs> but currently, we're only on version 2, I so... I found ammo! Okay... How how to make it like an automa uh, automaton? No, uh, automaton. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Um, I think to make it that way, I'm not entirely sure. I think the shell will still say the same for it. Just maybe instead of being rough, we would actually make it a little more smoother. Oh, okay, so instead of looking like it was cobbled together, it would be a bit more refined. Yes. Okay. But that's for version three. Version 
two, which is what you're currently going to design for. Yeah. Um, however you make it. Yeah, actually, in that case, you know what I said before about making the arms um, not be able to bend? Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking I might actually rescind that uh, decision. Or... Just what the technician ordered. Yeah, because I actually might have an idea of how I can do that. That would actually work pretty well. I think I enjoy fishing. <laughs> okay. Whoa, what the heck is that thing? Hmm, looks like some sort of weather transmogrification apparatus. That could be what ran the Tharplaws out of town. We'll do some digging. You just keep moving. And this also goes with what I, I said to you right before, right. George. This is the kind of shit that I want with, um, with interactions. It's just basically someone to shoot the shit with and bounce ideas off of while I work. Yeah. Which is understandable. Yeah, this is why I had issues. Because if I can get this pretty much anytime I stream, at least with somebody, then I can very easily work with that. I have your back, Ratchet. Ratchet, take cover. Deploying offensive tactics. These guys are brutal. I do not believe that was a totemoth. I will help you, Ratchet. This one's mine. Well, that kind of sucked. I, I, I got killed. And Clank just went off the edge. <laughs> so I was like, "Well, that's uh, kind of sucky." That's a whoopsie. I have your back, Ratchet. Uh, what if Pyroblast would be better than this? Oh my God! That fucking shoot through him. I will help you, Ratchet. <laughs> I love the as it went off this the edge. Mine. <laughs> Whoa, what the heck was that? I don't know why, but I've been like thinking about jumping back into cyberpunk lately. I don't know why. Engaging target. Well, so I love how ambitious that game was, I and mean, just how badly it just lost because of development. I mean, yeah. I mean, the concept for it was really good. Yeah, the concept was strong. The approach was shit. quite helpful. Honestly, that sounds like a lot of games. It's like the the concept was amazing. The execution though was kind of poor. Yeah, especially because of how quickly it shoved out to the point we're just basically trying to play the game cause it to glitch bug out and fuck up people still play Ratchet and Clank games? yeah I mean the Ratchet and Clank series is like my like childhood this one though was kind of one that I kind of skipped out nice on. more ammo do you understand the series story at all together? yeah I Ratchet and Clank has been a lot part of my life for a while so a lot of the story there is one or a few things that like kind of are like why is this part of the story I played first three in playstation 2 then got lost 
I mean, Deploying there was tactics. like a few things that happened that confused the fuck out of me why they did it the way they did it. Like, I have your back, Ratchet. When you get to the PS3 era, crack in time, and future tools, um, they're kind of like, oh, client, uh. Ratchet's the last Lombax, but in the video game for Going Commando, there is another Lombax, Angela Cross. The part that's weird is like, why did they kind of like say, yeah, Angela Cross is like no longer and like part of the story, or she like no longer exists? It's like that doesn't make sense. Angela Cross is Lombax. Why why did you get rid of her? So it just kind of confuses you, the fuck out of me why they did that. You ready, pal? Take to the head, Pat School Angel. Ah, I got distracted. Engaging target. Um. So, the thing with Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter is they were. Both games were made in the same studio, so they kind of just made it a thing for them to do cameos every so often. So that was, that was kind of the reason between the Clank, both of them. Help me with this you thing, on huh? Discord or something with a friend? Yeah, I am good actually with my yes. buddy Junkie, who is also live streaming. He is streaming Blender stuff right now. Hello. Yes. What's a cameo? Um, uh, oh god, how the hell do I we think I enjoy the cameo? <laughs> cameo they, is essentially where, so I'm trying to explain what a cameo here. actually is, like, itself. Help you, They're like, what's a cameo? And Ca yeah, a cameo is basically just where, um, a character from one thing or a character related to something in some way essentially appears in something that they're not directly related to. For example, if you ever seen any of the Marvel movies, seeing Stan Lee in it, he is a cameo due to the fact of him being the one who initially wrote all the Marvel comics. Be safe for now. Yeah. So it's like someone who's typically not meant to be in the universe, or someone who is in the universe, just they're not always in the same place. One. Yeah. Yeah, another example of a um, uh, cameo. Like, like, like I said, typically a cameo is either someone who's well known, someone who's related to what it's being cameoed in, or something of the nature. Yeah. So, um, like, so, like, let's just say another example. Say if there was a cartoon about uh, Back to the Future, but say, um, Marty's kid, and they, they're going on their own okay, time traveling they, they, adventures. They, 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 they get it. But um, so. Okay, the the cameos that they made references in, so um, I believe I don't know about the Jack and Daxter ones for like their cameos with uh, Ratchet and Clank, but I know the cameos that were done in the Ratchet and Clank series. Um, so for I believe it's Going Commando, or Up Your Arsenal. No, it's Going Commando. Um. Jack and Daxter have a reference in that. So if you go to Clank's apartment where you get the grav, uh, the grind boots and stuff, um, on the TV in the background, you can see Jack and Daxter on there. Um, and then another reference to them, and hell, even the creator of you know the series and stuff like that makes cameos, because in the um. I wonder if this one has it. Uh, no. So, um, typically, they'll have skins, like in the cheats menu or like 
because this this one doesn't have it. I'd be able to show you if I was playing like Ratchet and Clank one through three. But um, they typically have skin references. Um, Jack and Daxter had their own skin references in the game, so you could actually play at technically play as Jack in one of the Ratchet and Clank games as a skin. Um, or there were, um, in the latest game for Ratchet and Clank, um, for Rift Apart, you get the Dimensionator weapon, which opens rifts to other places and other worlds, and what's funny is that not only does Jack Daxter make a reference, but Sly Cooper as well, which is very funny, which they're all done by Naughty Dog Studios. That is a loaded question, and I'm not going to answer that one. What's the question? Do you believe in God? <laughs> That's a loaded question. I ain't answering that one. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah. But yeah, so Sly Cooper makes a cameo in Rift Apart. Um, uh, D -D 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 Jack Dexter makes a cameo, which I believe I the cameo one. that they make in Rift Apart is um the Jack and Dexter 3 version of Jack because um or is it Jack 3 or Jack 2 it's basically with the Jack and Dexter future basically of Jack and Dexter. so yeah um i there are a few other references they make in Rift Apart with the Dimensionator um, hey, uh, out. George. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off, but I actually had um, an idea for some new one by you. The thing would be going to be made of space junk. What would you think if I had the main torso? It seemed to be some form of like escape pod that uh, that was damaged. It's yes. so, like you were like climbing the back of it, and also, that's where you fill the thing out. Hold on a brief moment. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for popping in, saying hello, and checking out the series. Thank you. For Hey, Continue. I caught one. Uh, but yeah. Uh, what do you think of uh, that idea? Basically, the um, of like the main torso, essentially being like a little escape pod. I'm over here. That would be an interesting thing. Like a way out kind of thing. Like. Well, essentially, like, you know how with uh, Titanfall, how the Titans have, like, basically the front opens up like a hatch that the pilot climbs in? Yeah, or... That uh, but reverse. Well, no, because you know that the Titans have the auto jump feature. Oh, no, wait, yeah. have you... Did you actually play the multiplayer of Titanfall, or did you only... Yeah. Do, um... Okay, I was going to say, because if you played the multiplayer, you sure already know about the auto eject. Yeah, like the nuke eject and shit like that. On, yeah. Let's keep moving. I yeah, that. but mainly what I'm referring to is essentially imagine the way that the Titan opens, but instead of climbing in through the front of it, you climb in through the back of it. So essentially the, the main hatch for the escape pod where you'd actually get out of it is basically on the back of it and then the face and shit's on the front. Okay. <clears throat> That's basically what I was thinking. All right, I see where you're going with that. Hop in. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, speaking of Titanfall, um, do you remember what Titan you used the most of? Oh, I sure shit do. Which which Titan did you use? I was a Scorch main. Ah, <laughs> uh, you were a Scorch main. You, you were kind of the bane of my existence. Because <laughs> the thing was, I was a tone. I was always, um, I always mained a tone. So, yeah. Like, oh yeah, that I'm actually aware of. Yeah, because you guys I'm over here. fucking... Hey. Yeah, I, I, like, I was also the type of Scorch player where if I had, like, my core ability and I, um... And like I could get close to somebody, I would, I would throw anything and everything I could at them, and then while they're all flush or distracted, then I would use the core on them. <laughs> so it, like, so like I would launch the um, uh, the 
uh, the expo like the uh, igniting barrels at them, <clears throat> do the freaking firewall just to light the shit, and then like trudge through the fire while taking damage, right up in your face, start lighting it up, and then while you're distracted, then just do the slam. <laughs> yes. God, I hated like dealing with that. <laughs> and you scorn like scorch mains are a pain in my ass. <laughs> Like, yeah, but that's what I enjoyed about Titanfall, was just basically, it, if you're ballsy enough, you can do some some cool shit. Oh yeah, like, the, the, the thing is, if people aren't used to it, that's yeah. the worst part of it. Yeah, but, yeah, like, it's worse for the people who aren't used to it, because that's when they get, as the Russian Badger would say, the buffoon is flummoxed. I hear, I hear a raid. Who 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 has who has raided me? Tommy. Thank you for raiding me, man. How you doing? Thank you for the raid of five. Yeah, the raid of five. Thanks, man. How you doing? You big freaking foon. This stream has been taken by the rats. No, the rats are welcome. <laughs> welcome rats. I like rats. Welcome. Crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> Crazy. I was crazy once. Just so hungry. Well, I mean, get food. I mean, you can ha you can you, you can have one of my corn dog bites if you want. I'm pretty good, actually. So. But uh, yeah, like that's typically the kind of player I was. I did occasionally try other ones. Like the three I would primarily use was Scorch. Uh, Ion, and I think Monarch. We make an uh, Ion used to be my main for a while, because it was like one of the first Titans you were kind of like, yeah. Use. Monarch came later on. Yeah, I like, know. Like, if you notice that, Monarch wasn't there at the start, but they yes, added, I, um, I'm aware, because it was a free DLC, basically. Mm -hmm. Which is one thing I really applauded a respawn for doing. I'll say this right now. I desperately wanted to get the Tone Prime skin. Like, after yeah. I got used to using Tone, he was one of the skins that I wanted to get. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, something that I also still find just really f uh, funny. Um. Uh. What's that going to say? Hungry? I was hungry once. They fed me corn dog bites. Corn dog bites? They make me hungry. Hungry? I was hungry. <laughs> Beautiful. I love that. No, actually, you wanna know what I would have said for that? It'd be like, um, uh, corn dog bites. I had corn dog bite bites once. They weren't very, they weren't very uh, filling. So even after I ate them, I was still hungry. Hungry? I was, I was hungry, hungry once. <laughs> yeah. 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 Basically like that. <laughs> I believe we are all clear. Are we all clear, Plank? Do we have the all clear? We have the all clear. Awesome. Hop in. By the way, your robot's going to have four fingers. Four fingers? Yeah. So okay. three and a thumb. Fair enough. <laughs> yes. So you know what's funny? What? As you were dealing with your Streamlab stuff before I started, <laughs> I decided to look up since I was at the like the uh, chapter select menu. Yeah. yeah. I'm currently on chapter five. For this game, ah. I have four chapters left, and then I'm done with this fucking. Like, I don't know why, but this game out of the series is kind of god fucking damn it. <laughs> like, 
I love my Ratchet and Clank series, but this game and Full Frontal Assault are like the two that are just like, God, I why? Yeah, so you're saying the series as a whole is good, but those are just the the, the black sheep. The, these two games, because they were purely meant to be multiplayer played. Yeah. Like, they were meant for you to have, like, a group of friends to play with. But, of course... Um, the game wasn't popular enough for that. It's not that it wasn't popular enough, it's just I was not popular enough. <laughs> Like, I didn't have really any friends to play with. Yeah, that that's fair. It's a sad reality. Yeah, it's always a sad reality when you realize you don't have very many friends. But now I have too many friends to count, and it's an issue. <laughs> now I know why I was never part of the popular crowd. God! Oh, hello there. I'm glad I wasn't popular. I didn't think anyone was left in town. What can I do for you? We're trying to get to Terrawatt Forest so we can meet with Dr. Croyd. Is there a railway station we can use around here? Well, uh, there's a station over by the lighthouse. I'd take you over there myself, but the water's too dangerous for boating. Ephemeris hauled in that wasp last month to create <clears throat> a natural habitat for the Sepiads. Storm ran everyone out of town. I believe we may be of assistance. Uh, how do we reach the platform? Well... The collectors use that cannon to launch food over to the Sepiad. I suppose you could use it to reach the platform. I thought those tentacles looked familiar. Sepiads are sea-dwelling predators indigenous to planet Repor. They usually travel in packs and bring food back to their king. Maybe we'd better perform a geo-scan of the area. I don't want the rookies running into a king. I don't want the rookies running into a king. <laughs> Uh, guys, I think that might be a king. It's a Sepiad! No, that's not a king. That, if that's not the king, what the fuck? Stay calm, rookies. We know just how to take care of this creature. Don't tell the rookies, but I have no clue how to defeat this lake. Turn it, clock the button, still on. Uh, hang on, rookies. We're looking them up right now. Feeding time at the zoo. The creature is vulnerable. Last bullet would have been the one to cause the explosion. Uh, I need to step away for a second, so I will be back. Hit the bell. Good Hit work, the bell. Team. Hit the bell. Team mechanism activated. Excellent work, everyone. Oh, and he's dead. Oh. Oh. 
Hollow Diary, zero, zero, 002. A heinous crime has been committed. This morning, I awoke to find my laboratory in shambles. The vectomorphic triciloscope was smashed. The crack-resistant flume canisters were cracked. And worst of all, an egregious theft had been committed. The plans for the protomorphic energy extractor, gone. All that was left behind was a recipe for dropping stew. Mr. Dinkles, my friend, my muse. Someone had taken him, but it couldn't be. No, Evo. What have you done? Your muse? The fuck? I think we may have our culprit. Listen to this. Dr. Nemo Binkelmeyer, expert in robotics, avionics, and quantum mechanics. Partner at the Frumpus Croyd Exploratorium of Scientific Wonderment. He and Croyd were lifelong friends. Looks like they didn't stay friends for long. According to an article in the Magnus Inquisitor, Dr. Croyd wanted the technology to remain with the Tharpods. But I see several patent applications here signed by Nevo. He wanted to sell the technology to Crownnet. An expert in space travel? Corporate espionage? I detect copious amounts of whippersnapperism. Tread carefully, rookies. This Tharpod's resume reads just like Tachyon's early years. Tachyon's early years? Oh, well, mm. Tachyon's early years. I'm thinking about that now. I'm just like, Tachyon was, um... There is nanotech uh... over here. Hey, I caught one! Yes! Remembering Tachyon's early years. Uh, Crystal Tachyon. Am I done with this portion of the chapter? Recently, I am. I hope I am. I really do. Come here, Clink. Let me out of here. Now that was good teamwork. That must be the transport cannon to the weather platform. Hurry up before the King Sepiad shows up. Hurry up before the King shows up. Oh, let me check out the weapon shop. The Thunder Smack is one of my favorite weapons. It synthesizes traveling thunderstorms. You can also combine thunderstorms to unleash a massive tempest. Last weapon. Oh, cool! It is the last weapon on the list. Uh, so it's left to keep upgrading. I want to get this weapon. Blitzers. That blitzer packs a heck of a punch. like two weapons that I use. Twenty-five thousand. They're both twenty-five thousand. Uh, fuck it. Gotta love these new toys. The, there it is. Ready. I am ready. And I'm back. Welcome back. I win. Shut down the platform's power generator. 
destroyed three charging docks. Whoa, whoa. More enemies are on approach. It's a flying target. Time to run out of ammo. <laughs> Actually, um, tell you what, I think there's something right now. Um, what? So, you know how we were talking about Cyberpunk earlier? Yeah. Have you ever played it? Hey, I caught one. Ever played it myself? Yes. No, I can't say I have. I, but I've seen m more than my fair share of uh, memes and shit. All um, now? Uh, harping on it. Okay. So you, you, you've seen the memes of it, but have you like seen like actual gameplay or like? Yes. Huh? Yes, I have. Not me, like, shit. Yeah, I've seen genuine gameplay. Okay, cool. Why do you ask? No, because I was gonna ask you, like, you know, have you, like, um, seen and wanted to make any of that stuff? Because I know you made a few props that are similar to Cyberpunk. So you're basically saying, would I be interested in making anything that's in the cyberpunk-ish style? Ish. Um... That's a little hard to say, just because the fact that, like, I, I... I like the technology aspect, but I... I'm just not a fan of the cyberpunk style. What do you mean? Well, I understand that with the evolution of technology, shit gets a lot more simpler, sleeker, and everything else. The cybernetics. Are... Yeah. I, I very much understand that. The only issue I have with it is just the fact that it feels like most things that use it, use it way too liberally. L explain that? What do you mean, liberally? Okay. Have you ever seen, like, shows, movies, where it shows, like, oh, uh, like, like, very advanced sci-fi type technology with robotics? Be a little bit more specific. Where, okay... Like, are you talking, like, um, uh, Terminator kind Thank of style, you. or, like... Um, sort of. Almost like a Terminator in a cyber... with cyberpunk-like technology. So, without being, like, the, uh, T-1000 or, like, the other stuff where yeah. it's, like, it's a skeleton kind of base thing. Y y yes. Yeah, that, basically, what I was saying was that, think of androids that are way too human-looking. Like, you know how we say with stuff with, like, Robonecos and stuff, where you can clearly see seams in the chassis and in the joints and wires poking out in certain areas and shit, right? Something that looks like it's a machine. 
not like Detroit yeah, or something, human, something where it's that has like, its machine, but it's like it looks way too human. Go ahead, Ratchet. Yeah, so like, Hop in. like for example, the biggest cop out that I hate with like sci fi is shit is uh, is nanites. Do you know what a nanite is? I, I do, but I'm curious of where you're Nanobot. No, I know, I know that, but I'm curious of what you're referring with it. Basically, to where it's like, oh, someone could look perfectly normal, like they have nothing on them. And then, bam, uh, they have a fucking tank or something like that. Why? Oh, nano machines. Like, it feels lazy to me. Like, there's so many ways they just basically use, oh, the technology is too advanced for us to understand yet. Shit is a crutch. That is what annoys me. That's why I like shit like steampunk, because with that, there are some feasible ways you could use steam technology to create a lot of shit. Like, for example, uh, regarding steampunk, say if you have some, like, um... Death Star like laser, or like like basically like um, say you have like a, a tank or something like that, but it has a laser can instead of an actual munitions barrel. With steampunk, you can actually come up with something feasible to where that would work. With something like cyberpunk, it's it's way too easy to just basically cop out, kind of like how. You've seen a lot of cases with shit that uses magic. Like, oh, how could this person do this? How is this possible? How is this uh, able to be done? And 90% of the time you just hear magic shut up. It's magic. It doesn't need to make sense. Exactly. That, when it comes to technology, that really gets under my skin. When people do that way too much. Like, if they explain how and why, or if they can, without struggling to an insane degree. That's so, more understandable. So in other words, it's kind of like, explain to me how this works without Or if you can it... understand it by looking at it, if you're good enough, like I... Yeah. Like, like for example, do you remember the movie Chappie? Yes, I remember the movie Chappie. That is a good example of sci-fi done right, in my opinion. Because you can look at the way Chappie is designed, the robotics, the machinery, just the way he is put together, it makes sense. It is reasonable, it is feasible. And then there's sci-fi, like I said, like, um, freaking... Like, the fact that I'm having a hard time coming up with examples is a good show to show how many shit actually does it right. Um... Um, uh, like, okay, basically, another way of putting it is a lot of shit, like, like with Cyberpunk, is it sort of feels like, to me, it's trying to be, like, Tron, but in the real world, to where, oh, how is this possible? Uh, because it is. Because yeah, it, it, like, cause, like cause with, yes. Yeah, like with Tron, they could get away with shit flying, they could get away with... Um, vehicles that emit solid light, which can stop, which can stop someone dead or be physically impenetrable, because it's virtual. Yeah, because it's, it's it's a digital world. Basically. Exactly. To me, in most cases, Cyberpunk is basically trying to take that and be like, oh, but this is all in the real world. It's like, ow. I know I might be a little nitpicky with it, where I expect too much out of um fucking game and game developers and other shit, but it's just, that's why I don't like it, it's, it's too easy, is my issue. But I mean, conceptually wise, like, think about it more or less, I mean, at some point in time, the technology will become advanced enough where it does do that. Yeah, but I'm just saying, yep, I'm not saying that the technology is impossible. I'm just saying, the way they're approaching it, 
is basically them be like, oh yeah, it's here, but um, don't worry about why. Like, but like another thing as well is like, say for example, like extremely advanced technology that we have no feasible way of doing it. A good way of doing that is aliens because they have come up with things we don't know about. They're more advanced than we are in certain ways. So they have concepts that are a bit, I can kind of be a bit more like, okay, it's alien. That's a bit more excusable. Whereas if it's human technology, where it feels alien to that degree is where I have an issue. It's something very difficult to properly explain, unless if you understand shit the way I do. I mean, th that's also fair, honestly. And I'll also say I'm not specifically just harping on Cyberpunk with this. I've also seen plenty of cases where the same shit's been done to Steampunk, and I get equally heated about it. Well, how, how does the other one do it? What do you mean? Well, you said you could also go on about the other one, too. Oh, like about how Steampunk's pulled the same shit? Yeah. Regarding that, I have more of an issue with it when it comes to aesthetic. It's simply where some um, animator or something like that is just like, Oh, we'll take this thing, but how do we make it steampunk? Uh, I don't know, add gears, add brass, add smoke, done. I mean, yeah, like I, I said, I've seen concepts like that where it's just like, This makes no sense. It's got gears and smoke. Poof, yeah, works. exactly. I exactly. That's what I have issues with, is when shit does that. They don't put effort in making the design reasonable. Like, if it's Magitek, that's excusable because it uses concepts that aren't realistic. If it's Alien, it uses concepts that aren't realistic. All that shit. But Steampunk and Cyberpunk very much can be realistic. Pe a lot of times people... In my opinion, are just a little too lazy to actually make it feasible. Because that's why I have that's why I have a personal motto when it comes to um, whenever I design shit in Blender or something, especially if it's supposed to be robotic. I'm an engineer first and an artist second. Does it look cool? Yes. Does it look like it could feasibly work? No. Then I'm not doing it. I have it make sense, then I have it look cool. <clears throat> That's kind of what I'm trying to do here as well, because, for example, the way the fingers would work, without having to add an excessive amount of joints, this hand could function, because the fingers would curl up to grip it, and the thumbs on the side to be able to make a fist, as well as to be able to actually grip things. It just doesn't have a whole range of motion. Yeah. Nice. The arms, you can see it looks like they're made of primarily cabling, right? Yeah, that w that's what allows it to be more flexible without adding a shit ton of joints. That's what I'm talking about. Putting at least that much thought into a design. They have just like, oh, does it look cool? Yeah, then I don't give a shit about anything else. It's like I don't give a shit about other functions. Yeah, and that is truly just what pisses me off as some designs people do. Like, if someone's new and they're still trying to figure something out, I'd give them slack because, yeah, they're still trying to learn things. But if it's, say, like, uh, someone, like, uh, worked at fucking Blizzard doing shit like that, that's what gets me pissed off. Because, like, you have the resources, you have the talent, you have the manpower to do it, but you don't. That's also why, to a degree, I like a lot of the designs that Bungie has done for, like, Guns and Destiny. Is it makes sense in a lot of the cases, like a lot of the shit with SIVA. Knowing the way SIVA functions and how it is applied to things, that I like. The thing the is, though, SIVA's nanotech. 
Yeah. It's an but... AI nanotech, and it went rogue, but like, it's still... Yeah, but like I said, Steva is nanotech done right, in my opinion. Which, by the way, speaking of Siva, that, um... I'm hoping to run into Siva again in one of the... Even everything that I'm hearing, I doubt it. Which is still very upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, just to finish my thought with that, is that that's basically just what I mean, is that SIVA's done right because <clears throat> it is nanoparticulates in the air. They don't directly form solid matter just, just because they can. They integrate with things, they reinforce things, they manipulate and basically reconfigure shit. Kind of, kind of like in Pacific Rim 2, it had, um, if you remember towards the end of the movie, when, uh, what's his name, released the... The core things? The... Oh, no. The, like the, the silverfish-looking the, things. Yeah, the horde of, like, silverfish-looking kaijus. And they tore apart the three kaijus. Yeah, and just rebuilt them together. Rebuilt as a, a really large one, yeah. And basically added all the, all like the positives from all the other kaiju's into the yeah. one, like, including mass. Yes, which if you remember, one of the kaiju's took kinetic force and turned it into energy and sent yeah, it back. Yeah, since he absorbed and energetic. redirected it. Yeah, which I thought was cool that, that, uh -huh. that they did that. And technically, like... that's also possible to a degree biologically too. Yes. So the fact that it's like they made it, uh, that kaiju, that it's like, oh, you're going to hit me? Well, I'm going to take your hit, turn it into power, and then blast you back with it. Yeah. Uh. As I said, that's basically the kind of shit that I like. Where it makes sense where technology can manipulate other technology, not technology basically building itself in something that doesn't make sense. Well, technically, it's actually not even technology. It's literally yeah, good. Uh, well, biogenics. Down. Biology. Are you referring to the Pacific Rim one? Yeah. Because well, yeah, it comes yeah, yeah, in that the case, kaiju case, yeah. where it's just like it's yeah, using... yeah. That, that that's more biological, but it's still based on the same principle. Where whereas then say going with Siva. Diva, as, as, as we've uh, as we talked about, basically it can integrate both with technological and organic material. Which, again, makes sense because the SIVA itself would act as a bridge between the two since it can directly manipulate organic matter as well as modify and reconfigure technology on a molecular level. But... Going off of that topic as well, that also brings up another thing that I don't like about certain ways um, uh, nanites and shit are done. Okay, when well. basically they they essentially self-replicate using anything. Wait, go on. So like like Wait, you've you've seen shit where that. it's like nanites or nano machines or shit like that where basically it feeds off of it basically takes organic and inorganic matter and uses it to make more of itself hey, okay I you're gonna have one. to go a little bit more uh in depth with that one because oh, so like, it, like it, an example well no not an example but it <clears throat> like okay so you're saying that nanobots made out of small pieces of metal and electronics and all that stuff. yeah it can't reconstruct scraps of metal and like other electronics that it, it finds it, around it, to reconstruct more of them if it's made out of if it can acquire the similar components feasibly yes but like for example if it like i can understand if it could take like Let's just say if it was if it needed to function, copper, iron, um, plastic, uh, and Keep the raft away from I don't the know tunnel. lead, say for like a power source, for example, like as a conductor. If I could see it being able to physically take like small particulates of that and like say micro weld them together to create shit like three D printing. 
However, that's the thing. With 3D printing, you can't just use anything. You have to use the type of material, right? Yes. But, but what I have, but, but, hey, but, but, before you say that, I just want to say this. What I have an issue with is when they have it where it's like, oh, they're reconstructing themselves. Oh, here's a here's a half ruined building made Excuse of bricks me. and mortar. Me, oh, we'll take that and make more nanobots out of that. Oh, here's a tree. We'll take that. Okay, that no, that I understand with that. Like, I, I that can is see where I have that's problems. kind of asinine. Yeah. Because the only way that could work is if it could manipulate it on a molecular level. Which... Which... Is... Isn't feasibly possible. No, absolutely not. And that's where I have issues with it. Yeah. No, I, I, can, I can see that. Because that would basically be them, um, performing essentially alchemy or at least, um, chemical react... Chemical... Um... It would be like a chemical breakdown. Kind of in yeah, exactly. And even then, they would have to know how to do it for each and every material, and and basically be able to physically do it. Because at that point, you're you're just a step above being able to split an atom with the damn things. Yeah. Which should not be feasibly possible to. Oops. Yeah. At, le at least technology-wise, you should not be well, able to... Well, yeah, that shouldn't be feasibly possible for them to do it by themselves. Having a dedicated machine designed to convert one matter into another, that's a little more feasible, but it wouldn't be that small and would be basically equipped into the nanites. Clank, are you good? But yeah, that's basically just the um, issue that I have with that shit. It's just basically when they're just too they're just too lazy to even put an extra uh, cell or two of thought into it. Yeah. R whether that's the developers or the or storyboard the, um, writers. Welcome exactly. Because hell, Let's even a storyboard writer can put an extra ten fucking minutes into something to at least think a little harder about soil. how something could be possible. And honestly, I can actually speak from a bit of experience because you, you and like I said, a bit. Not saying I'm on par with some of the people who write the stories for like uh, Destiny or anything, because I know I'm not that good. But I have gotten decent enough when it comes to story story designing myself, where <clears throat> where I can at least come up with designs like that where it makes sense if you look at it from a logical degree how i'm describing shit makes sense yeah and it fits both narratively as well as um logically yeah that's that's way too small <laughs> like, like again here's another example too uh if you look at my stream what's wrong with this leg relative to the rest of it Uh, the size? Exactly. That would not be able to physically support that weight. But from some developers, it could. Yeah, like, the only way something that could support that weight is if it's made of, like, some freaking, like, ooh, metal or some shit. <laughs> ooh, ooh, metal. I love that. No, 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 I said ooh, ooh, which is basically what Thor's hammer is made of relative to Marvel. <laughs> I no, I no. <laughs> It's made of uwu metal. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes, it's made of uwu You ready, pal? <laughs> uwu I am ready. <laughs> oh god damn it! All in a day's work. <laughs> <sighs> like, um, oh man, that's a really, that's a really impressive battle suit you got. It, you, you went through a war zone, and you not got a scratch on it. What the hell is it made of? And you see the hood, you see a, a, like a like a furry like a furry um, mask underneath the helmet. Aluminum, sir. Aluminum, sir. I have your back, Ratchet. My and also say as well, George, this is what I was talking about before about how being able to actually just have a conversation with someone while I work on shit.
Just, just the fun little shindigs and conversations. It, it, exactly, because that's that kind of just keeps me mentally engaged enough to actually work on shit. I can't say much about it, other than it's guaranteed to rip you a new one. Alright, so if I just take these. Almost done building the rhino. I got two parts left. Also, I'm curious, is anyone in your chat so that, like commented on what I was saying? No, I fucking wish someone was. Cause I would love to hear like someone input with the aluminum. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got that uh, aluminum Ratchet. siding. <laughs> oh god, you don't know what that else just made me think of? Uh, <clears throat> uh like, like, it sounds like news that, that some, uh, some, like, scientists made, like, a, an extreme breakthrough, creating extremely, uh, durable material that's almost completely bulletproof, even as thin as a sheet of paper or something like that. Yeah. It's that strong, that durable. And it's light as, and it's extremely light, basically titanium on steroids. Um, what, what's its name? Yeah, and no, 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 no. I was like, what's its name? You see the scientist smile. They duck under a desk before putting on, before coming back up with a fur, with a, a furry head on, and then they just stare right at the camera, called aluminum. I can hear gamer and a lot of other people, either being absolutely happy about it. Or angry as all high hell. And I can see Gamer being the angriest high hell. It's like, God fucking damn it. Why why are they allowing furries to build technology? Well, here's the thing. How the hell do you think they, they uh, pay for their um, several thousand dollar fursuits? Exactly. Yeah, because a lot of them are either in tech industries or in the military. <laughs> military grade furry. <laughs> Tactical furry. Actually, what's funny is that one of my friends is actually, um, like, 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 she's not in the military, but I do know, um, like, basically she's, um, <laughs> she's a furry and she's essentially a Texan, given the way she acts. That... Ooh, kind of backtracking real quick. Um, right. to the, your opinion on certain things. Um, say, talking about the concepts of Fallout, Fallout 4 more specifically, Ratchet, take cover. Yeah. Uh, just for at least this part, and then the other part I'll talk more about the Light and Brotherhood stuff, but, yeah. um, My robotic friend, the Sins. Oh yeah, from Fallout, from, Fall, from Fallout 4? Yes. What is your opinion on them? I will help you. Going into the, like, the technology conversation back. That, that is a little more feasible because looking at the synth regarding their their anatomy that is still physically or er, is still feasible because we've come up with shit better than that even now at least when it comes to like them functioning the main thing that i would say that takes away from synth is their basically their programming hmm, this looks interesting because you know how in fallout 4 <clears throat> Uh, it's basically the synths close. are, <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, the synths essentially have their own form of AI and the more advanced ones basically are intended to be swapped out with actual people. Yes. And when they can, they basically want to essentially escape and be able to live their own actual lives. Yes. Well... <clears throat> Regarding that, that's where a lot of the more intricacies regarding them, in my opinion, come up. Because that's assuming it's an AI powerful enough to emulate human consciousness, which has been replicated in so many media forms over the years, it's stupid. We made it. Yeah. We made it. Now I not saying the concept's stupid, but, but basically just saying it's ridiculous. Um, now, what I have 
regarding that way I have to say is essentially just that the AI is still physically possible because we may not have yet. However, that does not mean that we will not be able to understand and, it's, and someday be able nice. to actually essentially replicate a, a consciousness and at that point basically create one anew. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's basically what synths are, except they just have underlying programming. Yeah. Which is basically like the recall code and shit. I found ammo! Now, what about the, um... The inner workings? Hey! I caught Because I'll tell you this much right now. Um, the concepts for, I believe hey. it was version 3 synths, being, um, Nick Valentine. You've seen him. He is a yeah. series three. Um, and you can see all the inner workings in the machinery, at least from what you can tell underneath. What's... Yeah, but keep in mind the design is also limited by the processing power of the game because they can't make it stupid detailed, or else it's gonna lag like shit. No, but it's like the concept of his insides is what I'm referring to. Yeah, like you could see how it's mechanical and how it would function. Now, yeah. the sense four though, however. So when you go to the Institute, you can see a synth being made. The yeah. concept for that kind of baffles me and kind of seems asinine. I can't really recall that offhand, so I can't exactly give a good... Uh... This The synths 4 are made using human remains, like skeletons. In so essentially, it, um, essentially an endoskeleton graft onto the living skeleton? No, the the human skeleton, and it's they add like synthetic muscle and sy synthetic skin in a bath, and then it forms into the synth four. Okay, At least visually that... wise, it looks like that. I don't know the actual physical lore of how I, I it's think, supposed to function. I think it functions similar to that of like a Terminator, because. You know how in a lot of cases in like the Terminator films, it's at least with like the T-1000s, like uh, the one that Arnold is. For him, the general design is they have the robotic Terminator endoskeleton, but then Skynet Loop legit diary. basically generates and graphs living... It has been 22 human... years since I lost That's Mr. Dinkos. I checked the fjords of Rancoru, <laughs> the meadows of Tortum Fi, and even the bluffs of Vendros. Nothing. No, oh, he's out there. Oh, poor Mr. Dinkles. I shudder to think of the countless birthdays he spent as a slave to Nevo's machinations. What plans does that traitor have for these creatures? I must act before it's too late. I have repurposed an old servitor drone to scour the planet for his whereabouts, using a sample of Mr. Dinkles' DNA. Ephemeris will run a comparative analysis of every life form it encounters until it finds a match. Without Mr. Dinkos, Nevo's plans will crumble and Magnus will be safe from his treachery. Anyways, continue. Uh, yeah, but. Uh, in the Terminator films, the reason why they actually have uh, essentially blood as well as like what seems to be living human tissue is because Skynet legit basically biologically grafts it onto the endoskeleton, making it look human. Yeah. So that allows the skin to be warm, that allows it to be malleable like that of human skin, break to some degree, and bleed. Okay. So I see it as they're doing something very similar to the synth. Whereas regarding their internals, that is a bit more in terms of designed to emulate a more of a human-like appearance in the sense of, uh, like for example, the synthetic muscle to allow it to where the body will like physically move and contract as a human would, instead of a servo where it's just stiff movements like you would see for an animatronic. Yeah. And with what you said about taking, uh, like, basically corpses, it could be the fact that they're using the corpses as 
I guess basically organic fodder to generate the, the cells that are being grafted onto the uh, synths. The only thing, the only thing corpsed is just the skeleton. There's no flesh on it anymore. There's no brain in it at all. It's just the human skeleton. May they do that so that as a so, so yeah, in that case, they're essentially grafting the artificial skin as well as all the electronics onto a human skeleton. Yeah. Which, to me, is kind of like, why are you using a human skeleton? Why not that just... I, th that technically makes sense in an immoral way. Because in that case, it has a similar proportion to that of human, and especially if it's a corpse. No two human bone structure is alike, even if it has the same bone layout, you know what I mean? It's yeah. That way so that they're not all the exact same height, and they're not all the same uh, build, everything else. To allow more diversity is to better for infiltration. Hmm. That's that's how I'm, I don't know if that's accurate, but that's how I'm believing it would make sense in. No, and, you, you and explain that kind of makes sense, yeah. And on top of that as well, using an existing human skeleton, what does that save on? Resources, so they don't have to build an actual metallic um, skeletal structure. They just simply graft all the electronics and shit onto an existing skeleton. So it's cost effective. Well, like I said, it makes sense feasibly, even if it is a very amoral way of looking at it. Well, te technically, the there oh, it's immoral no, anyways, because if you remember the story to Fallout, basically they kidnap your son, Sean, and use yeah. his DNA to create synths. Great, since that part I didn't exactly uh, hear, so... Basically, I just knew that they kidnapped every, your kid. Every um, synth that's created is using your son's DNA. Here. I guess because then it's uh, it's basically free of radiate mutation from exposure exposure to radiation. Yes, actually, fine enough, as, you, as you say that, that's exactly what they said. The reason that they used Sean was because he was radiation free. That's why they kidnapped Sean and they kidnapped or to to basically state if Sean died you would have been the next person that they would have came to kidnap. Because if you yeah, remember guess... Kellogg saying, it's like, at least we have a spare. Yeah. Because when they killed your significant other, technically they were supposed to leave you, your significant other, and only take your son. Yeah, but being the mercenaries they are, they didn't give a shit. Pretty much. They, they were only supposed to take Sean, but because your significant other fought them, they killed killed them basically so yeah which left <clears throat> you and Sean yeah too viable. I am ready yeah and I think for that as well what also makes sense is why they would prefer the kid over the parents is because uh, especially given how young he was it's basically very young cells so they're gonna be a lot stronger than that of an adult correct yeah they're gonna more vitality they're gonna be generally be stronger as well as that are also in a more um, simplistic state compared to that of a t of a of an adult human, so they're easier to work with. Yes. Hey, I caught one. So, so there were basically multiple reasons why they chose Sean first over you. Yeah, and I'm guessing in that regards, um, you and your partner were the only ones who actually survived that long in the uh, in that vault. Yes, because if you remember when you leave the or when you go to leave the vault. Everyone else is basically dead because they are all frostbitten. Yeah. But it's kind of weird how your pod is the only one that disengaged. Is that everyone else who was in the vault also was yeah. in the same case as you? Well, what it could have been was that could have also been attributed to at least a few things as well. Because here's the thing, vault was there only training the vaults to run certain psychological, biological, yeah. and neurological experiments, right? Yeah, every vault had it. There were, I believe, 
Yeah, th those are basically control um, samples, the ones that basically weren't experiments. Control groups. Yeah. Yeah. And regarding that, <clears throat> what it could have been was that maybe different uh, pods were set to different variables to test out different examples. Maybe another factor was genetic based on human, because some people could be more uh, physically resilient to shit than others. Hell, it could have just been something completely unrelated. Maybe some some electrical issue fucked up and the kill and basically damaged every other pod, but yours and his, or yours and theirs, I should say. Yeah. I say his because most often, whenever I've seen people play it, they play as the theme, they play as the mother. So. There I was about to leave for Tortem Fi when I said to myself, "Self, you should help out." Those but uh, yeah, so it could very easily have been that too. Could have just been, oh, you just got lucky. I think we may be in the clear. Hold on, I'll swing you back towards the lighthouse. Whoa, that was a close one. Alright, now I'm kind of drawing a blank of how I want to continue with this. The Sepiad is behind us. I'll steer you towards the shock tower. So, if you can There's have a look at it. Scare off the yeah, you might have to bear Before with me because I'm in the middle yeah, of the Yeah, I, I can, I can. Is that a boat? Fucking throw a boat at me. Whoops! Got a little problem with the intake manifold. Hold on! I'll give the old engine a kick. There we go. See? Sometimes you just the need fuck is that? encouragement. You'll have to activate the tower manually. Uh... Here we go. And I say the fuck is that mean the giant fish looking thing that was chasing you. Yeah, I don't. It, it's it's the king serpent. I forget what the Nothing name of it is. Don't eat me like five thousand decatones of electricity coursing through your body. Five thousand decatones. Heads up! Decatons? We got a tortomoth ahead. It's a tortomoth. All systems are operational. I'll give him this. He is persistent. Probably hasn't eaten in a while. Why, but th this yeah, reminds me of the um. Uh, after swallowing, uh, <laughs> swallowing my neighbor, the fuck you mean? Yeah. Hey, what the fuck are you just? Oh, were you reacting yeah. to audio from the game? Yeah. The, okay. That, yeah, yeah. I, I have your stream muted just so I don't have to hear you. So your shit doesn't come through my stream. So. Yeah, I, I have yours uh, muted as well. Um. You gonna throw another boat at me? Ow! You threw a boat at me. Yeah, I saw that. Take cover. Found the problem. You all right back there? Uh, no. Another Hurt. few thousand decatons of power, and we'll be Sepiad free. Ready for another shot tower? That's the name of it. This is the King Sepia. Alright. And he's dead? Question mark? I think he's I dead. That early stuns. Wait until the guys at work hear this. He's tased. Yeah. Don't tase me, bro. And don't tase me, bro. Oh, um, <clears throat> uh, as a quick side note, I actually wanted to ask you something. Sure. 
so something that I've uh, been wanting to do for a bit just due to uh, what's happened is I've been kind of wanting to find a game that I could uh, stream with Hazel. Okay. Do you yourself have any good opinions aside from like example uh, It Takes Two? Hey, I caught one. Uh, personally, I'll say it. Uh, yes. Are Just you, what the technician all right. ordered. Are you looking for like a co-op, <laughs> like work? Yeah, together yeah, kind of stream, yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically a game where like her and I directly interact with each other, whether if it's cooperatively, or whether if it's well, generally just cooperatively. So like her and I are either working on two sides of the same coin, or we're directly helping each other to achieve a goal. Um. Okay, so there is like, like another example, I guess, would be you know the game series like We Were Here. No. Okay, well, oh, I can explain that later. But go ahead. Um, so there is two games. One, obviously, as you already mentioned, It Takes Two, which yeah. is, I would say, in my personal opinion, probably the best one to do together. Because yeah, especially because it's built around the concept of basically as a couple. So. Not to mention, it's built around a couple with like couples issues. Like it's about a a mother yeah. and father who's getting a divorce, and they're running through basically. Um, yeah, the, essentially trust exercise world. shit. Pretty much, yeah. Which honestly, the reason I recommend that one the um, most is because we should keep moving. Me and Sky had issues for a while, but that game actually kind of helped us work cooperatively together and honestly made things better for us. So I would definitely uh, recommend that. The other, all right. the other game I would suggest, which is also working towards a common goal. Um, yeah. On my Steam wish list, I have a game that's like $14, um, and it's one I've been looking at a while, and you've probably seen some of the videos on TikTok, Bread and Fred. I have not, actually. Okay, so Bread and Fred is basically two penguins tied together by a rope, and you need to work together cooperatively in order to get to certain things or certain places. All right. So that Wait, is... hold on. Isn't, isn't there also... I remember seeing another game where basically one person's in VR, one's on desktop, and the one in VR yes, basically... Yes, that game is called Giant. Or yeah. Is it Giant? It's on, I had it on my wish list, and I think it still is. Yeah, because um, I've seen some people play it. It actually yeah, looks like a lot of fun. It, it does refer to someone having to be in VR and someone on desktop. Yeah. Um, the I actually I think it's in my wish list. Let me scroll briefly through it. Uh, yep, VR Giants. Actually, it's on sale right now for sixteen nineteen. Okay. Also, apparently the uh, thing you gave me ended and it went to the kind of shit that I listened to to fall asleep. <laughs> Oops. Uh. Well, I can pull up the other one. Uh. Where, where is it? Uh, there it is. Also, I have your stream pulled up to look at the thing that you wanted me to look at. Why does yeah. it look like Mr. Electrode from the... Shut, shut the fuck up. Shark shut Lord the Lava fuck Girl. up. <laughs> shut the moving. fuck up. <laughs> I, just... I see it now. Fuck you. <laughs> he looks like a giant light bulb. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Uh, now I just now I just hear uh, Ludo having George Lopez's voice. Oh, God damn it! Uh, now now you're gonna like hear me next D and D session just talk like George Lopez. Yeah, I'm making and a the bunch only of thing I and, and the only joke I can say is like when Ring asks, "Why do you sound like uh, Mr. Electrode?" I just be like, "Blame Junkie." Uh, Assuming he even knows what the fuck that is. How could you not? Like, I, I, I'm just saying, like, it depends on if he can do it well enough. Where he, no oh, oh God, you wanna know what would be uh, great? And since you actually would have time to do that, imagine this: you go through the entire movie again, you find every single line of his in the movie, and you somehow turn it into a response soundboard, just God. for D and D. <laughs> 
That would be awesome. It's like, hey, Ring, here's some movie references for you. I mean, we already make movie references a lot in it, anyways. Fuck movie references. We make anime references. Shit. We make too many references, alright? Hey, it, it's still fun, and that's all fun of D&D, so. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so currently. I. I you you bring up like what it looks like. I'm not gonna show that. But yeah, so like you know how the thing has like the eye on the front. Yeah. If it's purely mechanical, I'm trying to think of how I could do that because I was initially thinking you'd be like like uh, like an array of cameras like wired together for like the eye that you could see from the inside of the cockpit or of the uh, escape pod. But if it's not, if, but if it's mechanical, I'm trying to see if how you can do that while the eye can still like move around. Well, I mean, I'd be the one controlling it, so technically the <clears throat> mechanical side of things, it just kind of be like, um, you know how like, uh, when people are making stuff on lades and whatnot, uh, and they have yeah. the water input thing. Kind of like have it so it's like connected to the thing, and it just. Kind oh, of like oh, okay. I think you know what you're saying. So, so like for example, I was thinking you see like the like these on the arms. Yeah. I was thinking what it'd be is like let's just say this is like the housing for like the muscles, and like you just like weave the slime into these to allow you to bend it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, almost like slime powered hydraulics. Yeah. Yeah, so you're basically saying a similar oh, thing yeah. for it, where there's just like a, like a centralized piece, <laughs> and then like 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 tubing that would feed into it, which you basically put enough slime Ooh, into to basically have an eye ache. orifice. So, right? Yeah. Essentially. Uh, okay, and are you okay with it just basically being fixed in one place, or would you want to actually be able to like move around? Um. Because what I was honestly thinking was that what you, what I could do is I could essentially, uh, like if I was to do it, say if I took like like these parts here, and then so like, let, let's just say that's like a track it can run on, and then say if you need to look more to the left, you'd slide to the left, be able to like, so essentially it would be the case of you still have your full range, if you're actually looking out from it. Uh, let me see if I can give a bit of a visual aid here. So let's just say this is the actual eye and like this is the visual range you would have. Basically what I was thinking is that, so say if it, it being centered, wherever the eye is positioned, this is what you could see. Yeah. Yeah, like that's what you could see. However, if you say you need to see more to the right or to the left, the eye is physically slid over here. That way, your view is now that. Do you see what I mean? So you, so you still have this much range, but if you need to look in a specific direction, it would basically do that. Or say if you needed to look directly down at something, it would basically be like, let's just say, there, and then your view would be like that. So it kind of like runs on a like, plus kind of... Uh, yeah, kind of track. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that makes a bit of sense to me for, again, mechanical, but it would still be feasible because this would be your visual range. Yeah, so like, like this would, like, let... Like I said, this would basically be your visual range. However, uh, basically, you like this is your direct sight and your peripheral. <clears throat> Whereas you can slide the thing to see more, more uh, to the right, to the left, up and down if you have to. So essentially, as if your eyes were fixed in one place and you couldn't turn your eyes around, and your only pivot point was your neck, but you could only twist it left, twist it right, look up, and look down. Mm -hmm. Same idea. Okay. <clears throat> That's essentially what I was picturing with it. Because then basically anywhere like in between these would be covered by the peripheral. Mm -hmm.
Now, so with that being said, does that mean the um, the track I run on, um, the whole center piece like, moves on its own huh? individually, yeah, kind of like if you, you were to yeah. do like a like. Hey, I caught But one. then that also raises the question: Do I just flood the whole inside and like part of it I can flood my way out of to fit the arms and the legs? Basically, how I was. Oh dear, oh, that poor up. tharpod. <clears throat> Basically, how I was just imagining it is that the is that the primary mass would be inside of the escape pod. Yeah. So let so let's just use this for example. So like your primary mass would all be basically in here, right? Yeah. You would extend some out. You know, I'm actually studying this. Like it sure, arms. it's a dangerous planet riddled with murderous <clears throat> robots and, and exotic vectors, but hmm? take away okay, all that. Trouble. What do you have? Okay. The presidential retreat slash water park. Can I kill him now? No. I can make it look like an accident. How? Ratchet. All right, no. <laughs> <laughs> an accident. Huh. Ratchet. All right, fine. Yeah, so just let them know when you're good. Uh, I believe I am good now. Okay. Alright, but... Yeah, so if you see it... Yeah, I can see So, Yeah, so like all like the blue lines are basically like where your slime could basically go out and kind of fill. Okay. I'm still trying to work on the legs because I'm trying to figure out how that could work. Because I'm essentially thinking to a degree... Your, at least for like the limbs, your slime would basically act as hydraulic fluid. Yeah. But don't don't forget that um, the concept for uh, the tier two, there is now regular assisted hydraulics to make it. So yeah, can... for that, there's a lot more I can do with it. Cause for that, I could basically have like pneumatic pressure systems, say, in the arms. Then have like up here essentially some kind of uh, like pneumatic driver that essentially would manipulate these to allow them to flex properly. Yeah. Yeah. Or another way you could like think about it is that um, you know how hydraulic presses have like a liquid or something inside of it to kind of pressurize it and. That that's why it's called hydraulics, George. <laughs> Shut up. Anyways. Uh, we could make it so that they're just empty tubes and that I'm the one pushing the hydraulics using my own fluid. My, like my own liquid body fluid. That's basically what I just said before. Ah, brain. <laughs> yeah, so literally, since with a hydraulic, it expands and contracts the piston or whatever using the hydraulic fluid. What I was saying is that in this iteration, your slime would act in place of the hydraulic fluid. <laughs> Yes. I have your bag, Ratchet. And then in the next version, it would have dedicated hydraulic fun. fluid to make it assisted instead of directly hey, puppeted. I caught one. Which also means that it could run on its own if. Yeah, it yeah, it could essentially if it was able to be given some form of uh, AI to it to basically, uh, like function to basically move autonomously. Yeah. Which, by the way. It would work in the concept of it because of the fact that I've yet to build a steel defender. And I have the artificer skill tree for a steel defender. So in other words, my titan is the steel defender. Yeah, actually with that you could essentially put like the core of the steel defender into the into the armor. That basically act as your freaking Jarvis or some shit. Yeah, pretty much. But um, but yeah. Uh, go, going back with the uh, like the eyepiece thing. Essentially, what I was thinking is that with like all the slime and shit that's all in here, and certain bits being extended out to the limbs, you would, like I would just imagine you would basically have like I said, basically the tubes that would connect into the eye to allow you to kind of fill it to see out of. But then, say inside the pod, there'd be some kind of like like slider rod or something like that that you basically manipulate to slide up down left and right yeah that's just kind of how i pictured it
This arc lasher is quite effective. And again, like I said, we've we've been briefly been talking about this. Going back to what I had uh, mentioned before, that's honestly like this kind of proves my point is the fact that if you took like an extra like like uh, three, four, five minutes just to think about how something could feasibly function. It drastically improves the design because then you also have to keep that in mind in the design too. This, yeah, th this is it, why Ludo is working with Vanessa. Yeah, exactly because it, it, like with that concept, I would have have her be smart enough to think about that too. Because obviously, it's still being puppeteered by a plasmoid, but it still needs to actually function instead of just basically building. Building him a uh, scrap metal puppet that he just basically moving around. Yeah. Because the original concept for it was that it was just a uh, giant stone puppet. Yeah. So the the original concept has definitely changed. Yeah. Or at least it was evolved. Yes. Also, from what I just saw, did you turn that thing into a pig? Yes. Yeah, nice work. That that yes. is a nifty little gadget called the um critter strike. Okay. Which basically uh in previous hey, games used to be called the sheepinator. Okay. Which turns Enemies nice. into ammo. sheep. All right. So it's just like, oh hi. Oh hi, you're no livestock. Oh well, I can't turn you into livestock now because you turned into this. I'm over here. Quick, turn him into a pig. Actually, is it bad that that's something yeah. given like the way the character is that I could see like Captain, like uh, like the freaking like Captain Cork or something doing, where where it's like like a uh, quick turn into the pig. I want breakfast or something. I want bacon. Am I wrong? No. Uh, too high. Hello, Mr. Porker. I found ammo. How lovely. Well, we can't kaboom that. Fired Will! There's a man named Will screaming off in the distance. <laughs> Ooh, I thought that was funny because I had saw that uh, image at some point of. It's like, fire at Will! Man named Will in the distance screaming. No, 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 no I, I just imagined this. It is just, it's just like, like a general, like uh, someone commanding, uh, fire at will. In the distance, um, you just hear someone yell, "Fuck you!" Hey, I caught one. Fuck you. 
Yeah, and, and then, um, <laughs> actually, no, 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 I just have one even better. It was just kind of like, uh, just kind of like, uh, fire, like, um, uh, like, um, uh, gunner, fire, fire at will, and it just, fuck you, and then you hear the person give me orders Good. saying, you know what, you, you did ready, well. Yeah. You know what you did, Will? You, uh, you knew this was coming. You, you knew it was coming? Just accept your fate. George, I have a question for you regarding like uh, copyright music. Would any kind of lo-fi thing be okay or no? Uh, you have to find non-copyrighted lo-fi. Okay. There is nanotech over here. So, did did both of the things I sent you run out? Uh, no. I'm just kind of getting a little sick of the blockbuster ones. So. Oh, fair enough. If you type in YouTube, um. No, yeah, I just have no copyright rock music. Because, like, that's the kind of stuff I enjoy. Yeah, I found one here that says Alternative Rock Gaming Mix 1 Hour Practice No Copyright 2021. Do you think that'd be good, or...? Yeah. Okay. If it, if it says non-copyright, then you should be fine. Okay. Hey, I caught one! So. Yeah, um, I just what I'm afraid of is that if that if between when this came out and now some of the songs didn't have been made copyrighted. So, well, I'll tell you this much right now. Um, yeah. Twitch's rules regarding copyrighted music. Some will actually like. It, it will be muted in the stream. And you won't get a copyright strike unless the artist decides to copyright strike you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So basically, unless it's brought to their attention, oh. then they won't care. Right? Yeah. Essentially. But yeah, I don't know how much truth is to that because I I typically try to avoid having music like that played yeah i just like i just want to be as careful as i can just so that me simply just be like yeah i think this will be okay it doesn't bite me in the ass yeah well, like i said but, if you if you here. watch your stream back later and you noticed one of the songs that got played was hey, copyrighted um yeah. it will just be muted but then you'll know it's like all right well then i know not to play that again uh, okay, yeah so it's not basically one mistake and you're screwed type deal yeah no it, it's just it's a three strike teamwork. system if you actually get hit with a copyright strike but that playlist that i sent you i haven't had any issues with it all so. right but if there is an issue with it then you'll have to kind of yeah work that out yeah me and that Cthulhu looking my fire just so that other motherfucker. Now. You just kidnapped that little cute thing. Like, like come here. Dare. Whee. It's like, well, he's uh. Hey, I caught one. No longer part of the land we live in. I wish I knew where I was at. Also, oh, I'm on man. the fence of if I want to actually rig Whoa. this thing. I mean, this you're only making it to. Make it, you plan on actually. Yeah, but the thing okay? is, if I'm gonna do like renders and shit of it, having it rigged would make it easier because then I can pose it. True. I mean, I suppose this is something that you can use, like, since you now have that software as in, like, an animation thing. You ready? Cons yeah, but considering the fact yeah. that we did talk about, like, uh, in Ring's campaign, that there are a lot of moments that would be really funny. See uh, in an anime. 
Yeah, yeah, as, yeah as, actually as an animation, yeah. Yeah, which also would mean that I would basically have to create models of each and every one of our current and previous participants' characters. Yeah. But like I said, that's only if you ended up wanting to do that, because right yeah, which now, I kind of just... do. Go on. Because because like we've talked about before, I want to get more into doing animation and shit. Yeah. And I suppose our D and D moments are worth it. Hop in. Yeah. Go ahead, Ratchet. I mean, I have been sending you a bunch of, like, random skits yeah. from, like... It, yeah, I know, and I've looked into a bunch of myself, which are basically different, uh, animated, uh, skits people have done. Like, in, like, M&D-type style. This one's mine. Uh, uh, Clank just got kidnapped by Cthulhu. <laughs> or, oh, then I guess you returned them. Uh, no, they just dropped him from really high up, and it, he he died when he hit the ground. <laughs> um, I, I guess Clank didn't, didn't tuck and roll. Nope, nice. didn't tuck and roll. Ammo. But uh, yeah, like I said, animation and shit is something I would love to actually dabble in. By the way, ready. you you had mentioned I that you do ready. have other models of like VRMs. What yeah. Are, what other VRM models do you have put together already? Uh, well, keep in mind, you remember how both my model that I showed you before with the robotic arm, and a few others I I've done have been done using VRM bases, right? Yeah. That's basically what I mean, is that anytime I export something out of VRM Studios, it exports as a VRM file. And then what I do is I take that VRM file, import it into Blender, modify it to hell and back, and then typically re-export it as an FBX file. Hey, get away from my pal. And that's why I pull into Unity to basically fuck around with. Shoot it. Perhaps I should acquire some so... Ah. So yeah, like example, the uh, like, you know, like the robot made avatar that I have in VR chat, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was done using a VRM base. So I technically have her file, and anytime I've had to do other work for other people, where I've had to make something more or less from scratch, or for personal projects, I've always ended up using VRM to get a base for it. So I've. I have a decent variety of them from those different projects. However, what I can also do is using the same medium, I can not only export existing models I'm working on as VRMs, but then I can also um, then I can also just generate new ones using VRM Studios. Okay. Does anyone require nanotech? So I forget, Ludo is the red slime, right? He is a red slime, yes. The the reason for him being red in kind of lore retrospect wise. Yes! He's red due to the fact of how many corpses he's consumed. Oh, uh, it's basically his... red from blood. Yeah, he used to be a blue slime. Used to be. Alright. Because in that case, that also answers one design question for me. What color's the eye gonna be? You know what I mean? Yeah. Up in this place it was like this what did I just now say? now i can imagine oh, it's the like the red eye meme no or like the we ultra in oh, not the ultra yeah. instinct what the hell Hi. what the hell is the name of that meme where it's Dr. like the Croy. whole like flashing red there eye thing is. where it's just like I mean, oh oh uh, eyes glow is. real shit meme yeah paradoxology and i haven't seen them since course, it's like oh yeah you know i don't like this ago. thing <laughs> What? Or it's like job. you're in trouble. Can you tell us how to access this facility? Yeah. 
All you gotta do is take this tour cart over to Rosa Field, then cross Gorthon Crater to the main campus. Of course, that crater's impossible to cross without a guardian bot, but okay, let's see what that right is. This way, right this way, wonderment abounds. Hey, I caught one. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, the quality of the game has just gone way the fuck down for whatever reason. Sorry, what's going all the way, way the fuck down? I don't know if that's my eyes or the frame rate on the game has just kind of killed itself. Am I the only one who noticed that? Chat, who's alive? Who's alive in my chat? Can someone tell me whether or not it's my eyes or if it's actually the game? No, oh, wait, was it you're trying to verify? The... Frame if rate. like the stream's lagging? No, the frame rate in the game itself, because I'm looking at the stream and it kind of looks fine, but like, I don't know if it's the stream, my eyes? Oh, I'm currently watching your stream and it looks fine to me. God, my eyes then. <laughs> yeah, I think it's me. Hmm. Uh... Right, I still have like, this weapon to buy. I have purchased every weapon in the shop. Oh, but you have earned the trophy for the zombie apocalypse. Because hey, I bought everything you? that was in the shop. I thought you were taking the tour <laughs> to the Hall of Paradoxology. You got something against Wonder. Man. Do do do. Let's go. Welcome to the Frumpus Croyd Exploratorium of Scientific Wonderment. I am Dr. Frumpus Croyd. And I'm Dr. Nemo Fieselmeyer. And you are about to embark on an exciting odyssey through the world of science. Great. Next stop, Nerd Heaven. One down. Uh, what are you using? Hey, get away from my pal! This one's mine. The first stop on our tour of discovery is the Rosa Fields Mining Outpost. Go ahead, Nipa. Read from the prompter. Uh, yes, right. Eons ago, a Class D comet struck our planet with incredible force. The resulting fragments wound up in this very location. Dr. Croyd and I immediately implemented numerous devices in order to collect and catalog these samples for science. I have your back, Ratchet. Morphic energy repositories were designed to siphon and redistribute kinetic energy from the comet shards. However, the redistribution process is extremely unstable and should only be attempted by a licensed technician. Heart sinking! Now try powering up that shard using the energy repository! Stand by for energy dispersal. In. Nice work! If you can keep that shard energized, you should be able to use it to power up one of Croyd's guardians! And it's smooth sailing to the Hall of Paradoxology! <laughs> that shard is losing power! Look for some smaller fragments! They may have some juice left in them! You heard him, guys! Throw in as many fragments as you can!
God, why do these seem like arc style plants? Good work, guys. Get those fragments into the carrier. Like it's arc working. Genesis Grab more fragments. Genesis Part 2 kind of plants. I could say team. the shard is powering up. Due to the fact that I don't think I've ever actually played that, so. Sample has reached uh, maximum energy. So Arc Genesis Part 2. Um has to do with um I do enjoy geology element corruption. And so essentially creatures infected with specific types of elements giving them some sort of attunement to it. No, only one type of element. Okay, I uh, multiple fuck. meaning like multiple elements, but different ones are attuned to different specific elements. Like one might have like ice, one might have lightning type shit. Uh, all right, I have to like not be in the midst of doing something to no, explain it, it, this. It's all right. It's going all right. Into it's all right. Dude. Is very in depth and is very. Yeah. As I said, it's all right. Do take your time. Right. I'm gonna be at the charge station here, so I can probably explain it a little bit. Um. Nice one, pal. So, element in arc is basically space metal. It, it's a, in the liquid based form. It is a pliable and can be formed in many different shapes and ways. Um, All right. So. Oh, fuck! God damn it. I'm going to pause, because I actually want to explain this, because I Ark is really interesting to me, and I love it. So, Element is a space kind of material that fell to Earth, and basically jump-started the world into future technology. Cloning, okay. creations, space technology. Um... And at one point in time, element was used as war technology. Yeah, it was weaponized, basically. A little surprised you still haven't beaten this. I am literally three chapters or two chapters away now from finishing this. But, um... So... Basically... War broke out between continents. Basically nuclear warfare, except it's element. So, the war broke out, and because life on Earth was falling apart, and yeah. the planet was soon and slowly become uninhabitable, um, com I believe a company, one company in particular, built the arcs and sent it up with a bunch of people and okay to be more specific with this there were two different um companies now i think about it there were two different companies that are you saying oh, okay just ships. clarify as well when you say companies are you referring to like uh like uh, business companies or like military companies both kind of in a sense so, okay. one company built arcs, kind of like sphere domes, like, oh god, what are they called? Um, they're domes, they have, uh, life inside, uh, trees, things, the, the fuck- Biospheres? Or biodomes? Bio, bio, terrariums. Okay, yeah, true. They, they basically built giant terrariums. Um, one being the island, the other one being uh, Scorched Earth, which is a desert. Um, uh, there's Scorched Earth. Aberration, it was kind of... It was the island, but because the people who... 
God, this is so jumbled in the explanation. I apologize for the jumbledness because my brain is just like, there's this, there's that, there's this, this, and that. This yeah, yeah, basically that. you're trying to sift through information without constantly backtracking. Yes. So the company that built the terrarium domes made the island, scorched earth, and one other, but it was because of the war that broke out so these domes um have overseers which watch over these clones of people from history from time um there was a few people in particular two people can only come into mind right now there were others like tribe wise there's the two main people that are part of the story, Helena, who is a reach searcher and explorer, and she's very much nature driven. There's Rockwell, Edward Rockwell, who is more into technology and development. He was yeah. kind of like Da Vinci, I would say. Hey. If anything, he's probably a scientific recreation of Da Vinci. Where when they went up into these arcs, they recreated human life. Because when the arcs were leaving the Earth... So I'm only going to talk about the Terraria Dome arcs right now. And then I'll speak about the colony ship that um, became from it. So the Terrariums left Earth. And when they left... The final, as I would call it, the Big Bang of the Element War wiped out all life on the planet. Yeah. Any, any life that didn't leave on the colony ship, which again, I'll say I'll get back to that after that. So, the people that were in the Ark are known as Homo Deus II. Humans too, basically. Yeah. And the Overseer um, monitors them. So, they're recreated clones that are on the arcs that have to evolve and adapt to the arcs. Now, those who ascend or beat the trials, as as it were. Yeah. So, beating, like, the broodmother, the dragon, um, the Methiopicius, which is a giant monkey basically uh yeah. think of godzilla not godzilla um king kong yeah um once you beat all three bosses and go to the ascension cave you battle your way through to get to the overseer the overseer will which is made out of element all these arcs have been made using the element so the overseer is made out of pure solid and liquefied element yeah and it will shape shift um as as the fight progresses into basically the three bosses you first so yeah so dragon, it's essentially uh, a boss uh, rush it's basically the final trial um when you beat the overseer you ascend and become like either gamma beta alpha um so i've gotten completely sidetracked um (laughs) but anyways so helena and rockwell did these trials they conquered um the uh the island scorched earth um scorched earth by the way the boss for that one is a manticore Oh, all right. So they beat those. When they made it to the island two, I'll call it for name placeholder's sake, um, they joined a tribe which went and tried to destroy the overseer using a makeshift IED. Um, all right. They brought it into the overseer's battle arena they detonated it 
and destroyed the Ark. Which... Okay, so they were basic. Essentially, they shot themselves in the foot. Yes, because the Arks, being launched into space, um, had a UV protection dome. Oh, okay, which... so basically upon killing it, dropped the UV, literally scorching it. Yes, so the surface of the Island 2, which is known as Aberration, which is an underground DLC for Ark. Now, Aberration... Yeah. Um, the arcs all have liquid element inside the arcs to keep everything running and functioning and doing as it should. Yeah. So aberration, because it's underground, liquid element is more form there. Now, as I stated with Rockwell, he was interested in technology in all that other forms. So as Rockwell and Helena and the rest of the other people traveled through these arcs, dis uh, Rockwell had discovered Element, because one of the tribes had gone and fought the Overseer and the boss. Or, sorry, they had faced the Broodmother, the Dragon, and the Methiopikius, and had gotten Element from them. Now, Rockwell yeah. researched it, noticed it that it did have the properties as, you know, previously on Earth, before the arcs became to be, discovered its purpose its technology its capabilities and yeah Rock... right basically reverse engineered it yes so he was researching it trying to discover more of it but the only way he could do that is if he collected more of it so helena reese like under well found it through rockwell because helena being the animal researcher she is she knew that the dinosaurs the animals and stuff like that shouldn't exist she knew <laughs> that from uh studying them and because of her studies on the island helena knew things were wrong because she had witnessed t-rexes in an ice area because the island is split up into yeah biomes biomes so there's like the ice biome the desert and then there's also the regular Grass Plains Islands. One of the islands I used to form up on, on the island map, was yeah. Her Herbivore Island, which only formed herbivores. So, like, trikes, um, yeah. stegos, and, like, you know... Yeah, all, all the herb herbivorous um, dinosaurs. Yes. Then there was also a part there called Carnivore Island. Yeah, which, which is the opposite. Yeah, which could obviously fill in. So there was like scorpions, sabers, <laughs> uh, carnos, <laughs> T-Rexes, yeah. and so on. So Helena, yeah. when doing her like animal research, discovered that the T-Rexes should not be able to live in a frost area. That the, um, the way the island functioned shouldn't function the way it does because of the fact that the carnivores eating as much as they are despite not running out of food the herbivores are obvious because they little eat grass and stuff like that you know the whole yeah so circle, basically the whole circle of life thing yeah if, if you look at the food chain it doesn't add up yes which she learned and then when um rockwell had discovered element and had told her about it or at least she, she put two and two together she saw the research she was like interesting and she didn't she didn't really fully put the element in play of it she just knew that the arcs were something different so that being said um uh rockwell researched it more for technology and advancement helena yeah. connected it to the arcs being technology and that everything is being reproduced which when Helena went into the Overseer boss fight, she noticed all the technology. Because as you're going into the uh, Overseer boss fight, yeah. there are terminals that kind of explain everything that goes on. And Helena, when she found out, was like, oh, this explains a lot. And knew and figured it everything out with that. Yeah, and... with that, she basically, at that point, she put two and two <clears throat> together. Yes. Now, going to Aberration... Um, when they destroyed it and the UV, uh, thing, the shield 
went down, they all retreated down underground. Now, here's the thing. Rockwell tested element on animals to see what it would do to them and everything. Now, right. Rockwell said, fuck it. I'm going to test it on myself. Rockwell injected himself with element, liquid element, which right. turned him into a giant mutated creature, which in aberration, you fight him as a final boss for the um, aberration part of everything. All right. <clears throat> now, you eventually make your way back down to Earth in the Extinction DLC. And you exist into four, no, three separate areas, biodomes on yeah. Earth that arcs that haven't left the planet. There is a frost dome, a nature dome, and a desert dome. Now, you can leave these sanctuary domes, but the thing is, you are going into uninhabitable um, planet side. Yeah, yeah basically you're going out into, essentially, Earth from Wally. -E. Yes, but worse. Really, really worse. It but what's funny is that you are at ground zero the last city where everything was developed okay so, yeah so basically essentially the in destiny terms the golden age ground zero exactly now here is where you find corrupted creatures corrupted animals and even some actually animals that still are not um, part of any biological things. They were manifested and mutated from it. So yeah. So some of the animals are actually born here. So basically what you're saying is these creatures are essentially radiation-induced evolutionary runoff. Exactly. So um, there is elements and uh, supply drops for from the arcs to the last yeah. city. Um, but basically, so, um, due to the war, there is something that was created from it called the King Kaiju. Okay. Um, which the King Kaiju is part of the final boss. Well, actually, is the final boss. But there's, like, different levels of the King Kaiju. There is the normal King Kaiju, the mid-corruption King Kaiju, and then the completely corrupted King Kaiju. Now, All right. in lore, um, Helena had ascended and fought the King Kaiju, which in lore, she used something called a mov or mo something i can't remember i think it's an moa yeah but um it's basically essentially a giant mech and fought okay. king kaiju now she ascended to homo deus which is basically godhood yeah in our layman terms now when you as a player beat the king kaiju you ascend yourself, but you also activate the recall program. Essentially meaning that you summon all the arcs back down planet side. And when the arcs so... return to the planet, they re terraform the planet. So basically similar to like it like at the end of Wally. -E. <clears throat> yes. Except instead of it starting on the ship and bring that ship back, it started on Earth bringing every ship back. Yes. So essentially, when the arcs return to Earth, yeah, they um, basically terraform the planet using the bio, uh, the terrariums that they've generated over the years. Yes. Also, at the same time, when the terrariums return and they reform the planet, 
it also purges element from the world. So essentially, all right. it all element that exists on the planet becomes purged and no longer it basically disintegrates and yeah gets rid of it. Now that's the arcs, the t- biodomes. Now going to the colony ship, which is done by the second company. Now because Rockwell existed in a sense of uh, biological and system systemly he was uploaded basically to the network okay yeah so it's just consciousness uploaded yes and because the consciousness being uploaded to the arcs they're constantly uploaded so in other words rockwell becoming corrupted with element his now mental state has also been been corrupted in the system files uh, okay so basically he's essentially um he's essentially a, a general hive mind which has been corrupted correct now which leads us into the colony ship since the colony ship is connected to the ark and earth um essentially rockwell discovers the colony ship now the colony ship um is what survived so in other words it is the original human race that survived and is on the ark yeah so essentially what uh what the ship was in wally yes now the colony ship is meant to find a brand new earth a new inhabitable planet yeah now where essentially wally's uh ship case was meant to just kind of fly around in space until earth is clean yeah now, which is recolonized whereas that thing is basically set to terraform another planet yes now the ship is again run on element built by element rockwell being the way he is and uploaded to the system all these humans are in cryo sleep so genesis part one you're basically playing in a simulation now helena and rockwell know that they're both in the system helena knows roxwell's in the system and rockwell knows helena's in the system so helena is trying to purge rockwell from the system whereas rockwell is trying to continue to corrupt the system now rockwell being uploaded into the network and so is helena rockwell is creating elemented corrupted survivors so Rockwell essentially is turning all the survivors on the colony ship into corrupted, mindless minions. Now, at the same time as him doing that, he is also experimenting on the creatures that are on the arcs. Now, Helena, being the way she is, um, segregated Rockwell on the colony ship. So essentially quarantined him. Yes. He is quarantined to one half of the ship. And Helena is protecting the other half. Now, the simulation for Arc Genesis Part 1, you are essentially trying to beat the trials, survive, evolve um, in Genesis Part 1. You are given a tech suit. Or, no, sorry, that that's Part 2. So, Part 1, you're um, essentially in simulation for four different biomes. There is the desert ocean lava and bog you are to survive and do all the trials that are being put in front of you now once you've completed all the trials um you essentially do the final trial which throws you into the system to face the digitized rockwell now, when you face the digitized Rockwell, you are basically trying to purge him from the system, which partial works. Rockwell has basically created himself a second body, a corrupted body in in the yeah. colony ship. So now you may have purged Rockwell from the digital system. But now you have to deal with him in the physical uh, space. 
which is where Genesis Part 2 comes in. You are now released from your cryostasis, and you are now trying to survive on the uncorrupted side of the Ark, or okay. the colony ship. All right, before you continue, could you actually have a quick look at what I've got here just to get your thoughts? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, you kind of see what I was going for with this? Yes. All right, but yeah, proceed. So, yeah. So, the... um. The second part of the arc, being Genesis Part 2, you're surviving now with the um, tech suit that you're given, which yeah. is um, way different than the one you get on the island and the original biodomes. It's basically essentially the tech suit Mark II, which is a yeah. little bit more slimmer looking and a lot more, eh, more kind of standard issue of what it looks like. Yeah, so, so basically, if you were to account it, it's like uh, the first one from the island is like the Iron Man Mark I suit, whereas what you got now is like the Mark II or Mark III. Yes. So now, with that being said, with this tech suit given to you and you surviving on the main, the uncorrupted side of the arc, you do the same thing. You complete trials to prepare yourself and get ready to fight rockwell head on now when you go over to the corrupted side of the arc face all the creatures that are over there and complete the trials as you delve deeper into the depths of it yeah um you notice as you're going through you are almost at a habitable planet the colony ship has found a habitable planet. Now, Rockwell's intention when you get to the new planet is to just, basically to corrupt it, to corrupt it, and to basically, yeah, just to, just to corrupt it. The the I, my brain's stroking on the actual word to use, but essentially he's going to rule the planet. Yeah. Now, this entails means that. You need to stop and kill Rockwell before you get to the planet. Because what Yeah, basically once he gets on the planet, he can run and then basically fester like a disease. Yes. So, in other words, you need to detach his portion of the ship off. But because of Rockwell's hold on the ship, he is basically preventing you from detaching Purging him. him yes so you have to fight him At, and during the progression of the fight helena gifts you with a mech part two so you use this mech to clear out rockwell's corruption to clear out his biological uh tentacles and all his disease yeah now, the part that happens, once you've gotten Rockwell into a weakened enough state, essentially loosen his grip on the control of his side of the ship. Yeah. Now, you get to the new planet, and Rockwell is still alive, but he is weak. So, Helena now in full control of the ship, releases the survivors from his uh, connection and yeah. essentially ejects the pods that everyone's in to the planet side. And so basically instead of laying the planet, she essentially jettisons the, the healthy survivors. Yes, she jettisons the healthy survivors to the planet side and jettisons you out of the ship. And Helena, with one last final note, thanks you oh, for helping her. And, and let me go, she detonates the ship? She does detonate the colony ship, destroying her and Rockwell forever. 
<laughs> at least as far as we're concerned. Yeah. The rest of the story will kind of be explained in arc two, which according to rumors, and I don't know how much truth is to this, arc two will be without any technology at all. Or at least without any uh, sufficiently advanced technology. Yes. Which is good, but also at the same time, kind of might... I don't know. Because I also have a theory with it, and I go back and forth with it a lot. Like, and I've talked to some of the community members from ARC. It's just kind of like, so why... Like, the the colony ship detonates outside the planet. You cannot tell me that there is no space debris, no technology. Not to mention the, the jettison pods. You cannot tell me no one is recycling them. Or using some technology from the ship that had crashed into the planet. Not to mention, I'm also theorizing and, and with another buddy of mine, who I used to play ARC with for eight years are theorizing that Rockwell may return because of the fact of, yes, the colony ship detonated, but Rockwell is a disease. He basically created a plague of himself. He, he is essentially a sentient cancer. Pretty much. And yes, Helena blew up the colony ship, but that doesn't necessarily mean... Rockwell won't find a way off. Well, hey, you can look at it this way. If William Afton's fi figured out how to survive this long. Yeah. Uh, I am... I'll, I'll, I'm going to say this right now. Chat, I am sorry for going on a full fucking tangent with that. But you can tell I'm a survivor. <laughs> I... Eight years on the arc... I, I had spent way too much time playing Ark Survival Evolved. Doing good, pal. So yeah. it, it's just one of it's one of my passion games. So Yeah, well at this point I don't know what else to do with this thing, dude. So I can just break it, which I don't really feel up for doing. But, I, I, I'll say this right now, I apologize to you, Junkie, for going on about that whole thing. No, no, it's fine, because honestly, I think it's interesting, too, so... Ammunition acquired. Nice one, pal! Enemy down. I, I mean, I could very least ask you what your thoughts are. I'm good. More than just kind of dump it on me, on a solicited. Well, like I said, I definitely find that the overall concept very interesting. That's a very sensible reason to why basically all the shit I've heard regarding Ark is. Example, why there's dinosaurs and shit. Yeah. Because, honestly, do you want I, for the longest time, thought the general plot for Ark was? I've never seen a comic sure. like this before. Aliens, uh, basically, some kind of alien race got their hands on essentially uh, genesis material for like uh, for earth both in terms of like say human DNA as well as DNA of a variety of different creatures including prehistoric ones too and we're just kind of like huh, let's see how they interact in this regard and then basically generated the entire biosphere and biodome and shit like this just to essentially see what humans uh, what humanity could do in this situation now, I'll say this, I thought the same thing when we were originally God. playing Ark, and it was literally only the island aberration, and, um, has reached maximum energy threshold. you know, all that. But when they dropped Extinction, and then Genesis, they kind of, um, wrote the lore out a little bit more specifically. Like, originally it was just kind of, a uh, yeah, this is kind of thrown together, and it was still kind of alpha days. But then they did start to add a little bit more depth to it. So they kind of explained a lot that was one down. part of the yeah. it's working. But uh, just to uh, go back to things, at this point, as I said, I don't really know what I can do. So I'm 
Yeah, I'm kind of getting just basically tired of things, so I'm thinking I might call my stream here, so. Alright. I think we'll yeah, but the fact that I've been going for like almost three hours now, so. Alright, well, with yeah, that. I'm almost at three hours, too. How yeah, convenient. well, with that. I am going to call my stream. It may not have been much in regards to actually working in Blender, but hey, this is an experiment that seemed to actually work out pretty well in my favor. Yeah. Just now, the next time we go and do this, um, yeah, to have I think the more main of an idea to what. Yeah, to exactly. Work yeah, I think the main thing that I'll do come next time I stream, which I think I'm gonna make at the same time, just so that we can do this again. But I'm gonna try and work out a much more clearer idea about what the fuck I want to make. Yeah. Yeah, especially as we get closer into October, that'll definitely help because it'll basically have um, more holiday. Yeah, exactly. I believe we are all clear. So yeah, I guess with that, I will be ending my stream. Is Frosted live right now? Uh, let's. They are actually the playing demonologist. So I would say raid Frosted, uh, and I will be raiding them right afterwards. Your VTuber looking blind as fuck. You need blind as fuck. Enemy defeated. Yeah, I'm kind of curious the fuck you mean by that too, game. Seventy-five percent. Then you're the one who worked on it. Yeah, which... I don't know when you want to work on this model a little bit more, so that's a... Just let me know when. There are more things I want to add to it, but I want to... Yeah, I, I know, it's just I've also had a lot on my plate lately, so... I know, and that's why I'm, like, also not bugging you as much, because I know you yeah. have a lot on your plate, especially with what happened with your grandmother and... Yeah. And not to mention you got shit. your girlfriend now, so water? it's just like... Yeah. And the fact that I I basically been spending given my time on working on shit for her, so Oh, you got something in the works for her? I uh, yes, in fact I actually do. Ooh. It's basically me just doing it for her because I want to, so <clears throat> Hey, you know what that works. Yeah. Also remind me, how do I do a raid again? Don't I just do like slash raid and then the person? Slash name? raid space and then you do their name. Power supply. Okay, let's see if I spelled that correctly. Actually, because I have a checkpoint now, I'm actually going to call the stream here. I spent a whole 40 minutes, or 30 minutes, explaining arc lore. So this is going to make for a great VOD for YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, with Junkie, I'm also going to be raiding Frosted alongside him. So as he's raiding Frosted, yeah, I... but apparently I'm not signed into it, so that's something you gotta deal with quickly. You... What? Yeah, for some reason, like, like I went to raid him, but they had to give me a prompt to uh, basically uh, sign into my uh, Twitch or log in my Twitch. You know you could do it on your Streamlabs, right? Yeah, but I thought I already was on my Streamlabs. That's the thing. Actually, according to my Streamlabs, I'm already logged in. What the fuck? Oh, for my end. Uh, yep, yeah, there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be sending you guys over to Frosted Freaks. And ladies and gentlemen on Junkie Stream, as soon as you can figure out how to do it, we'll be sending you guys off. So for my end, ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful night, and I shall see you all tomorrow for Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, possibly. Yeah. So. Because since it all hinges on me and I got no idea what the fuck I'm going to be doing with tomorrow. Yeah. So. Have a night, everyone. Bye-bye!